Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folari. Uh, we thank God it's a Friday. And um, um, let's take a look at our children. Well, in particular, a particular uh, uh, set of children, kind of children. And we're talking about uh, Nigeria's out-of-school children. Um, it's, you know, it's been of concern. Um, recently, we were hearing that um, there are up to 10.5 million Nigerian kids out of school uh, all over the country. But um, I suppose it, in the northern area, uh, there might be a, a slight difference. But generally speaking, um, the government has a program. Uh, in fact, it is called Better Education Service for Div Deli uh, Better Education Service Delivery for All, and um, its uh, coordinator uh, is uh, our guest this morning, the Northeast Coordinator of Better Education Service Delivery for All. Uh, he's in the person of Dr. Abdullahi Garukua. Good morning to you, Dr. Garukua. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Fuller. Indeed. Thank you very much uh, for making uh, the time for us. Um, now, what we wanted to do, of course, is find out the progress on this um, um, laudable uh, um, you know, uh, notion uh, that um, there are some Nigerian schools. You know, I mean, like in other aspects of our lives, we talk about the unbanked. Uh, now, God forbid, we're talking about children who are not able to be in school. We're talking about out-of-school children in Nigeria. The number has come down from an earlier figure, much earlier figure of um, 10.5 million. Now I hear that progress has been made, and so that figure is not current. It might be historical, but it's not current. Uh, tell me the strides uh, that your agency has been making. Yeah, thank you. Okay, did you hear me? I wanted, I wanted to hear from you the successes uh, that have been achieved that have brought down the figure from uh, 10.5 million, even though some outlets continue to quote that figure, but it is erroneous um, because it is much better now. In fact, I, uh, t tell me, what is the current latest figure of um, you know, the children that still need to be catered to from you know, 10.5 million? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, and um, a very good money. And um, we can say that there are some conflicting um, figures on the number of um, out-of-school children in Nigeria. Sure. But uh, um, uh, according to the uh, 2019 survey, we have 10.1 uh, million out-of-school children. And um, this uh, is a figure that has been uh, verified by the... Um, uh, National Bureau of Statistics and also the the Population uh, Commission and um, this figure, due to the intervention of the uh, the Better Education Service Delivery for All, has been reduced to uh, 6.95 uh, million in 2020, and um, uh, currently uh, there is a survey uh, ongoing. Also, that will give us the uh, figure of the out of school uh, children. And, um, you know, um, the out-of-school children is an educational problem that is uh, universal. And um, uh, it has a, a kind of uh, uh, impact on the economy of any country. And uh, Nigeria cannot be excluded. Uh, when you look at even the, the UNESCO uh, Institute of Statistics just also came out with their own indicators that the out-of-school children uh, is on the rise. And... Um, uh, um, South Africa, Zambia, and Nigeria are, are the lead. But with uh, intervention, like the, the BESDA intervention, uh, we are reducing the number of uh, out-of-school children in, in Nigeria at large. And um, in, in Gombe, we have our own uh, approach, which is um, entirely uh, different. Uh, let me just uh, correct this impression. I am the coordinator of uh, Gombe State, uh, BESDA. Uh, appointed by the governor Alaji Mahamadu in Yahaya in 2019. And this is uh, our third year of this uh, program. And uh, we have so many success stories to share with you and also give you true figures and indicators and um, to give you our figures of out of school children, contrary to what has been speculated in the media. Excellent. And uh, thank you very much for that. Um 
uh, correction, it's not Northeast Coordinator, as I said, but in Gombe. Uh, you're, you were appointed by your governor, and um, you are the uh, Gombe uh, Coordinator. And as you said, you, you said you have a different approach. Maybe we can take it from there. Um, first of all, tell me, in what way is the approach in Gombe uh, different uh, from what obtains uh, elsewhere? Yeah, okay. Um, Gombe, in Gombe State, uh, Gombe State is the, is the first state um, in the 17 business states that, uh, that um, find, you know, a coordinating office, appointed a coordinator just for the purpose of the BISDA program. And um, the governor appointed someone from the university outside the suburb to come and um, coordinate the program and give the program a technical support. And um, when, we, when we started in 2019, we, we, we first, um, with the instruction and the political will, I still remember this day when the governor called and said uh, he wanted to meet us in his office. Uh, and he said there is this thing that is so alarming, the issue of out of school children, and we need to address it uh, uh, within the shortest period of time. And um, he told us, he looked at my eyes and he said, go and get these kids back to school. And that was uh, the thing he told me and he gave me the political will. And when I came out, we said, okay, how do we start identifying these kids and what are the categories of these kids? So we realized that in the northern part of uh, Gombe, uh, we have a lot of kids that are roaming the street. We have a lot of kids uh, ranging from the Almajiri and the girl child. And we have other vulnerable kids that are also out of uh, school. So we look at this very, very critical. We did our own uh, mapping and, uh, and we, 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 we identified areas that have the highest number of out of school children in Gombe. And we established non formal learning centers in all of these uh, local governments. In these non formal learning centers, we were able to establish uh, around 529 Almajiri schools, 315 girl child centers. And we were able to deploy almost 2,000 uh, non formal uh, learning facilitators in all of these centers. And we came to agree with the Alaramas, we came to agree with uh, uh, some of the Almajiris uh, Al and Gaya School in some of the hardest to reach areas in Gombe, where you find you hardly find anything that has to do with education. And sometimes when you report this to His Excellency, he mobilizes us with security. He even at times sends his wife to go with us to all of these hard to reach areas to make sure we get the buy-in, the courage of these uh, people. And at the end of the day, we were able to reach out to them and tell them the importance of education. And, and, and you cannot just have only one side of education, uh, maybe the, 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 the Islamic part or the this Angaya part of education, and without having the, the formal uh, education. And within the shortest period of time, we're able to move almost all of the, the nooks and crannies of Gombe State, and uh, we're able to establish all these centers and at the point in time, it was the Alaramas that were even keen into the program. Mm -hmm. And um, most of our centers, how do we do them? We first started with a sensitization and advocacy to the Alaramas and community leaders, sensitizing them the importance of uh, education and integration of uh, Almajiri into the proper system. Most of our Almajiri kids are people that knows how to read and write with the, in, in Arabic. So you cannot call them illiterates, but they are illiterate in the other uh, Western you know, uh, education. So we told them the importance, and almost all of them keyed into the program. And we launched the program in, uh, in Malin City in Kwame local government. And that was how the program started proper with the acceptance of the Alaramas, with the acceptance, uh, you know, of, uh, of, of, of the community leaders, with the acceptance of almost everybody in the state. And the political will give us the, the headway and um, many more will come through our discussion. Mm, indeed. Uh, and that really takes care of a question I would have asked because I was going to ask how the um, uh, Amajiri authorities are, how accepting are they of this overture? And you've answered that pretty well. 
Um, you also spoke, I, I wanted to get clarity, clarity on uh, another aspect of kids. You, uh, well, I imagine I was going to ask about, but as I said, I think you've given us stuff on that. Uh, the vulnerable kids uh, that you were talking about, uh, the, that's also one segment. Uh, what did you mean by vulnerable kids? Yeah, okay, you have within the society, uh, there are some people, set of uh, people within the community that uh, their, their, their parents cannot take them to school and they are living within the communities. And some of them, uh, you know, the fact that Gombe is the heartbeat of Northeast, you have influx of people coming from uh, Borno, coming from Yobi, coming from Adamawa, and uh, a, lot, a lot of places. The fact that Gombe is a very peaceful uh, state. And um, we have this influx of people, uh, you know, even some of them are from the IDPs. And we look at it and we said, okay, these are vulnerable people that if you don't do something, they can become a problem to the, to the society in Gombe. And they can even create more confusion and also a lot of uh, uh, impact negatively to the community and also even to the uh, economy of the state. So we look at these um, kids that are vulnerable walking in the street and we said, okay, we need to get these kids back to school. Then we identify, we establish a kind of uh, CBMCs, a community-based uh, management committees within the, the communities and uh, within the, uh, the, the uh, what do you call it, within the society, within, within them. And we said, okay, these committees will be responsible in identifying kids that are not going to school within the communities. And they were able to identify names and houses and we went to all these uh, houses and said, okay, we are going to, with the instruction of the governor, we are going to enroll your kid back to school. There in Gombe, then when you say, uh, based their enrollment, everybody knows them because they were moving in hundreds of thousands. And um, in, uh, the governor himself flagged off uh, the, the distribution of learning materials, the distribution of books free and also uniforms to these kids. In, uh, we did it in Funakai in Jalingo, and uh, we, we gave all these kids uh, learning materials. We, we, we gave them uniforms. Uh, thank you, Dr. Garkua. You've already told us um, about vulnerable kids. You've told us about the Amaljuri system. Um, but I also wanted to find out, um, you also spoke about um, non-formal learning centers. Um, uh, is, so I wanted to find out what those are doing, uh, the non-formal uh, learning centers, uh, how they are different from schools and uh, where they come into the mix. Because you were telling us about, you know, the government, you know, in, in your state going to be providing them with material, schooling materials, uniforms and books and whatever they need. But how about the non-formal uh, learning centers? All right. Um, you know, the BESDA program um, it itself, it's a program for result. And um, a program for result, you have some DLIs. And these DLIs, it's what you earn you uh, reward. Because in BESDA, you don't have free money. You have to earn the money. And um, when we started, they said, okay, you have result areas. And you have the result area one, which has to do with the non-formal settings were given equitable access to out-of-school children. And um, result area two, it's improving literacy. And result area three is system strengthening. And in result area one, this is where you have the Almajiri and girl child. These are categorized into uh, the non-formal settings. And they said, okay, if you can bring, for example, 100,000 kids back to school, each and every head has a reward for it. And um, you have to, you know, identify the set of uh, Tsangaya schools. You have to identify the set of uh, non-formal uh, learning centers. Okay, the non-formal learning centers, these are kids that are not having, you know, that don't go to the conventional schools. For example, the Almajiri are just basing in their centers. And also the girl child centers, we just identify the, the, uh, uh, the traditional head in the community and we establish the center in front of his uh, house. So these are centers that are not in the formal uh, settings or are not in the formal schools. And um, we said, okay, we are going to teach you numeracy and uh, literacy 
in that uh, centers, maybe like in your Zangaya school, we say, okay, this is already an established Zangaya school. And um, we want to introduce or integrate that Zangaya school into a kind of non-formal learning centers and to introduce the basic literacy program in, in that center. You know, even in, in, in the system of education, you also have uh, the, the agency for mass literacy, adult and non-formal education. Uh, this is what the BISDA is just consolidating on. And also, the non-formal centers are just there to improve the literacy, to make sure that we have a literate uh, society uh, before the end of the program. And that, that is why all these uh, Zangaya schools, we call them non-formal learning centers. Because it's after graduating from the basic and post-literacy program, these kids will be mainstreamed into the formal uh, system of education, to mainstream into the formal uh, schools. That is, they are going to have a migration from non-formal to formal uh, settings. And uh, because you cannot just migrate them from non-formal where they don't know uh, alphabets, they don't know how to read or write, they don't know how to count numbers, and you send them to formal schools, is just like you're wasting your time. Mm -hmm. So we have to give them this basic and post-literacy program. Then after that, we mainstream them into the formal settings. Uh, but now in Gombe, we have another approach uh, designed by His Excellency, the Governor of Gombe State. Uh, try to make sure that within their centers, a, a, a kind of a, a learning system will be developed, which is entirely different from what we used to know in Nigeria. And um, this is a model that we have adopted from different uh, countries, and we want to domesticate it uh, in Gombe. Already the system has been, uh, I mean, has been constructed in, in Gombe, and we are trying to deploy a, a system uh, of education that will, be, will have a vocational training. You are going to have the numeracy and literacy, and um, uh, you are going to have different skills that the kids will learn while doing reading their, their Quran and also at the same time having the Western uh, education. So the non-formal system is different from the formal uh, settings, and this is what we do in Result Area 1, where we have the al Majiri and Girl Child. And Result Area 2, uh, that is where we have the improving literacy, where we are looking at the kids that are already in formal schools. And all of these kids, arranging 350,000 of them, we provided um, learning materials and we builded the capacity of their teachers with the new approach of uh, Mokaranta, which is also a kind of an accelerated learning approach uh, that within a few uh, months of learning, the kids will start margin letters and alphabets and they'll start reading and writing and also building the capacity of the teachers and the head teachers. Uh, this is what we are doing. And I'm, I don't, don't, don't want to forget again. And in result area three, which has to do with uh, system strengthening, uh, Gombe State of recent got an award as the first state to deploy uh, CAPI, that is, a, I mean, the digital at, um, annual school census. We use our computer devices to do the digital attendance, and the Federal Ministry of Education awarded Gombe as the first state to deploy CAPI for digital attendance. This is all with the support of the BESDA program and also the, the political will of the governor. Mm. You know, as an aside, um, uh, even the, uh, the Almajuri uh, kids, the kids in the Almajuri system, they must have some sort of um, <clears throat> um, learning, maybe informal, informal, because um, they, I imagine they, they, they know the value of money. They'll be able to count. They'll know that if you take five naira out of ten naira, you're left with five naira. I'm just, this is speculation on my part. Um, you, you know, so th there is that sort of... Um, organic education perhaps in existence <laughs> yes um you you, you know uh, as we said earlier you have the 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 state agency for um, uh, mass literacy adult and non-formal education uh, and also all what um, BESDA is doing is just uh, to, to consolidate or to supplement uh, what the, the, the SUBEB is doing. When you look at uh, the SUBEB, um, you have the social mobilization uh, department. And in the social mobilization department, you have this component of al Majiri education and um, also the girl-child education. And um, they have been, you know, 
um, having to support some of the al uh, schools in, in, in the state, even before the BESDA program. Uh, as you know, the, 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 the UBEC Act of 2004 has, uh, has mandated free and compulsory basic education. So um, the, they have been uh, a program already in Subeb that has been supporting the al program. And also you have within the, the, the Sangaya schools, there are people that are already willing you know, to integrate, to start teaching them this numeracy and literacy. And before then, they also have their own system of education, the learning uh, system of education in the Sangaya schools. So they know how to, to, to read numbers and they, can, they know how to count and, and, and so on. So they have already a system of education existing, but uh, not like uh, the, the, the Western education. Uh, so, to, so to say. Mm. So already there is an established system from the Zangaya schools and the Subeb already. Mm. Now, a number of times in this uh, conversation, you've uh, spoken about uh, children. We're talking about out-of-school children. But then you've spoken about the girl-child education. Um, how is that different? It, you, it, it's not a children education, which would include boys and girls. Uh, what is the difference uh, with the girl child and the boy child in these modern times? Okay, fine. Um, you know, in, 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 in most of our areas, um, it used to be very, very difficult for, for girls to even go to school because some at the age of even 11, they, they easily get married. And um, so, some of them, they, 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 their parents are using them for just economic gains. For example, um, when you have a kid um, aging from, from 10 up to 9, uh, I mean 10, 11, 12, 13, that is not going to school, and a girl, some of them are just uh, roaming the street. Uh, this uh, girl child, and most of them, when you realize, they only go to farm in the morning. Some of them, they, they, they hawk in the street. Uh, and so on. So what we, we did was, okay, let's find a center that is close to them, looking at the proximity of the community and said, okay, this center is just going to be girl child. And um, we are going to teach them numeracy, literacy, and skills. And, and that is why we, we, we give most of them sewing machines so that they can have something to be doing instead of roaming the street. And um, when you look at the boy child, for example, uh, in our own case, we are looking at the al Not uh, in, in, in other states, um, they have their own way they call them. But when you look at those kids that are having um, 10 up to 15 um, years, they, they are just boy child. And we said, OK, they should be part of this and girl schools. And don't forget, even in the girl child centers, we, we, we used to have a mixed uh, boy child and girl child center okay. where you have both the al and also the boy child in one center, but learning different skills, but the same um, numeracy and literacy program. Mm. For example, the boys are learning how to sew cups, you know, um, and the girls uh, knitting and, and so on. Okay. Um, uh, well, uh, indeed, quite, quite interesting. Uh, but as you know, these are different times uh, uh, going back into our culture and tradition. What you seem to be doing, uh, BESDA, is engaging uh, with our culture in a positive way. But uh, when I say these are different times, um, you know, you said girl child, the girl child, you know, she's um, availed of the access of uh, sewing machines and that kind of a thing. So we begin to go down that line of perhaps... Um, uh, stereotypes of uh, what a girl can do and what a boy can do. Um, where do you think it sort of comes out so that, um, look, uh, what about a girl who wants to become an engineer, who wants to become a pilot, you know, who wants to become a doctor? Is it going to be later on in the process that she'll be able to make that uh, branch off? Yeah, because in the first place, if you don't give her this uh, basic uh, literacy program, how do you want her to start? As I mentioned earlier, you know, she, she, she needs to start by even, um, you know, um, understanding the, the letters, try to read and write before you take her to the formal settings where she can, uh, you know, decide on what to do. You know, she has to start learning from this center. And what we are doing is just to encourage them, okay, look, you can be studying while doing your, uh, your vocational 
uh, skills or okay. while doing other businesses. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a kind of an encouragement. Indeed. That, I get okay, you. Once you finish this basic and post literacy, then you can move into the formal uh, schools. You can be integrated proper. Yeah. And in any case, you know, truth be told, there are traditional roles all over the world uh, uh, between the sexes. Uh, uh, so there's no uh, denying that. Now, of course, it goes without saying, uh, all of this is free. But when a thing is free, it's being paid for by someone. So how is all of yeah. this being financed? Uh, you, you spoke about the encouragement, uh, even um, w that the government has brought to bear. Are there international agencies involved? Yes. Um, as I mentioned earlier, in BESDA, you don't have free money. You earn your money. And if someone said, Gombe State has six million US dollars, yes, Gombe State has six million US dollars, but we earned them. Nobody gave Gombe State for free. And how did we earn this? How do we earn all this uh, money, for example? Is okay, identify the best, as I mentioned, is a program for result. It's just for you to say, okay, identify 10 kids and I give you reward for identifying these kids. And this reward will go back to you, will go to the account of your state and your state can decide how to do and bring more kids and you get more reward. And you know, the, 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 the World Bank is supporting the federal government in trying to reduce the number of out of school children. But the BESDA program is domicile in Subeb, in Subeb because uh, the Subeb, uh, the relevant authorities or agencies that are responsible for basic education. And um, in, in, in Subeb, you find out that they have almost all what the BESDA are doing. Social mobilization is doing what is doing in result area one. Um, uh, school services are doing the TPD program in, in Subeb, and th this is where you have the result area to improve literacy. And system strengthening, you have the quality assurance and planning department. They are all doing what the BESDA are doing. So, but in this case, you have a program for result. Somebody said a program for reward. Now they said, okay, we have established a non-formal center. Establishing that center, for example, you have $1,000. Enrolling each and every kid, for example, you have $50 for that. Now, if you have 20 kids, 20 centers, they will multiply that 20 times the number of reward. And also, if you have 20 kids, they will multiply 20 times the number of reward. And that reward will be going into the account of states. And now, if, for example, the states are saying, okay, we don't have money to do that, and just the new approach by the um, National Implementation Advisor now, and uh, there is a new approach. Okay, if you want to bring five, uh, 500,000 kids back to school and you have targeted, you need, uh, for example, uh, 4 million US dollars to get these kids back to school, then you're going to say, if you can give me, advance me with um, um, 1 million US dollars, I'll make sure I bring all these kids back to school. And after the reward, you can remove your 1 million and give me uh, my balance, for example. So <laughs> the BESDA program is a program for reward, a program for result. You don't have free money. And if even if um, you, you, you say, okay, I, I have 100 kids, and they say, okay, 100 kids times $100, then this is the reward your state will be getting, and the, the, the World Bank will, will send the money directly to your state. Okay. And that funds will only be used to make sure that, okay, these kids get learning materials, these kids get um, uh, all the required instructional materials, and also all, all what we are doing, the incentives we are providing in the centers. And um, this is how we get our funding, is it's when we do our job, you have to do your job first before you get a penny from uh, the Federal Ministry of Education or the UBEC. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for that explanation. But uh, I actually meant, uh, even though it's a valuable explanation you gave, uh, because it shows us the source on how this is funded, to the parents of the uh, out-of-school child, uh, it doesn't cost a cobble. No, no, no. Uh -huh. Yes, that's, that's the point. Uh, but yeah, as you've uh, so you know competently explained, it's it, it's a kind of a free education. Yeah, uh, you know you don't you don't, you don't you don't you don't spend a penny, and um, I, I I can tell you if you go around Gombe State, we have distributed over 
um, one million books to, to, to this out of school children since when we started. We have distributed to, to formal schools, to non-formal schools, and um, uh, all of them, they have their, their notebooks, they have their textbooks of Mokaranta, Let's Read, and Julie Phonics, and they have their notebooks, uh, three, four pieces of them, and um, also they have their pencils and, and so on. So this is from the reward, and it's free. Nobody collects a penny from a, a father or from a, you know, guidance. We just give them uh, books once they are registered in the school and we use their registers and we uh, distribute the books to all of the schools in Gombe State. Indeed. Um, as you know, up and down Nigeria, children are part of the um, sort of um, local economy. Uh, uh, we, you don't see that very much in... Uh, developed countries, children, you know, whatever they do, they may be hawking, they may be helping to produce goods that are going to be hawked later on. Uh, but in the north, I imagine that there are a lot of um, children um, that are also integrated into uh, cattle rearing. Uh, and it's a tradition, it's a cultural thing, apart from being an economic thing. Um, how, how, uh, how easily has that worked with you in the, with those kids, those kids that are part of the um, uh, cattle uh, herding, rearing uh, system of the economy. Have they been yeah, enthusiastic? Um, it, yes, you know, you, you know, even before before the BASDA program, you have um, uh, the the Agency for Nomadic Education from President and, Jonathan. Um, we Stein. just leveraged on. Yes, yes. So we leveraged on all these uh, centers. And you know, the fact that they are nomads, they move around, the timing is flexible. And the centers are mobile. And the learning facilities are also mobile. Today, you may have the center here. And tomorrow, the center will move to another location, depending on the proximity and availability of the kids, because we are taking the education down to their doorsteps. Today, um, well, for example, we make sure if in within this community or Ruga or Fula, and you have someone who can read and write. It doesn't matter if he has NCE or that, because some of them have been trained during this uh, nomadic education era, and uh, they are very good in, 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 in numeracy and literacy. Uh, sometimes even better than those with an NCE certificate. So we, we, we have some of them that we have already um, you know, just give them a brush up of a training, and we we we, we deploy them to their centers so that you 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 um, you see them teaching in their local language, and because they easily grab in their local language than 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 yeah. um than the, the 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 new language. So this is what we do: we follow them to their doorsteps, and we establish the centers there, and we find someone within the community. And we, the, the centers are flexible and the timing is flexible depending on the availability. Indeed. Well, um, I want to thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Abdullahi uh, Garukua, for coming on our program and um, giving us an insight into the work that's going on. Uh, the Buhari Media Organization uh, put it out that um, the, uh, the population of out of school you know, uh, Nigerian children is in the region of 10.5 million naira, was in the region of 10.5 million naira, but has been reduced uh, to a figure of 6.9 million naira, all within the period of the uh, Buhari uh, administration. In Gombe, in particular, uh, what are the figures that um, you are working with uh, for your state? Yeah, fine. Um, uh, in, in Gombe State, I, I think nobody can uh, put a hand and say there is uh, there is evidence, a data that has been established that we have so 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 number of out of school children. Uh, I have seen some reports from politicians that are saying that we have seven hundred thousand uh, out of school children. I think I can engage in a debate with that and to prove them that this is very very wrong. And there is no any agency that is responsible for data collection that has this figure. Even the Population Commission, the National Bureau of Statistics, these are the two agencies that are responsible for uh, coming up with the data or data we have for out of school children or any uh, established uh, data. And when you even um, look at the, even in, North, in northern Nigeria, if not Kanu uh, or some few states, there's no state that even has 700,000 out of school children. Yes. In, 20, uh, in 2020, the Nigerian Education Data Survey, I mean in 2015, came up with a report that Gombe has 450,000 out-of-school children. I think 
and that is the baseline data that the base that the World Bank are using. And they said, okay, if we can reduce this number of out-of-school children year by year, and so that in the next three years we can finish all of these uh, kids and enroll them back to school. So there is no any established uh, data that can tell you we have 700,000 out-of-school children. I think this is completely wrong. And just, okay, agreed we have 700,000 kids. Is, just, is this just to make noise you have 700,000? Give us an approach on how to reduce the number of kids, All right. you know? Uh, right. Give us a new approach. Okay, you have 700. Okay, but I'll take you to the point, uh, to your question. Now in Gombe State, when we started, the National Bureau of Statistics are the body, uh, independent verification agents that are responsible for, 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 for the data, you, you know? And they came and did their survey. We then in our non-formal centers alone, we have almost 300,000 kids across the states that are in our non-formal learning centers. Okay. You know, not to talk of the vulnerable kids that are in the formal schools. And it's even uh, visible in Gombe State. Everywhere you go, there is this based on enrollment. The based on enrollment alone, if you go, they have overstretched even the capacity of some of our primary schools. For example, if you go to Pantami Primary School, Pantami Primary School, we have to develop another means of putting tents outside the classroom so because the class are overstretched. And this is because of the uh, enrollment that was very, very high. So far, even when you look at by premium times of September uh, 2021, uh, the, the data of out-of-school children, when you look at uh, Gombe State, we have only 162,000 okay. kids that are out-of-school children in 2021. Mm -hmm. You know, And currently, the, the National Bureau of Statistics, uh, they just concluded their survey of out-of-school children. So we are going to see another set of reduction of the number of out-of-school children from 162,000, maybe to, 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 to the barest minimum, because what we already have in our centers is higher than this. We, Indeed. We, we, we have gone almost... In fact, yeah, the, so in fact, the, uh, yeah, the, we can say. I'm sorry, the, the we, Buhari Media Office actually uh, uh, is citing, according to uh, reports for Gombe, 52,600. You know, just for example. Uh, yes, 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 so, yes. So what I would say is, I want to thank you very much. As I said earlier, uh, thank you very much, and I wish you the best of luck in the um, great work that you are doing in uh, Gombe, and that Besda itself is doing all over the country. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, then. All right. Um, now, to cut away, there might be, uh, we, we couldn't, as we were speaking with, the, um, uh, with Dr. Garukua, we couldn't at the same time take calls. But I think, yeah, we can take calls now in case there are any commentaries. Um, and by the way, the uh, BESDA program, um, the Better Education Service Delivery for All, um, it's not just a northern area. I was citing the Buhari uh, Media Office earlier, and um, they also cite that um, they have that uh, formation in states like, um, let's see now, Oyo, uh, Rivers. You know, in fact, uh, according to um, the uh, Buhari Media Organization, there are 40,000 such kids in uh, Oyo, in Rivers, 22,000. And uh, I'm just taking non-northern uh, areas, uh, you know, so, uh, good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yari. Thank you for calling in. Uncle Yari, you said PP, your guest is gone. I wanted to ask him one or two questions. Yes, I'm sorry we but couldn't I'm, do both um, together. I'm, I'm impressed by that uh, initiative from his state, from Gombe State, you know? So, I wish uh, other states would uh, copy the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, mm -hmm. were going to, you were going to announce figures of Southern uh, State. I wanted to ask you, what about uh, Akwaibom? I remember Governor Akwaibio did it to such an extent that he was arresting parents that refused to send uh, such children to school. What would be their number now? Indeed. And also, I also wanted to ask the gentleman that left whether how is he liaising with the Amangere schools that uh, President Jonathan set up at that time? Okay, no, he, he spoke about that a bit. If you recall, he spoke that about it. He said they were building on that in this okay. BESTA initiative. But thank it's God for good. that, the Jonathan uh, initiative. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so impressed by their own initiative in Gombe. We need to hear from other cities in the north Indeed. how they are also approaching their own. Indeed. All right. Good morning. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. George. Good morning. As I was saying, um, uh, this uh, what it's uh, the states that um, this program is in include uh, Adamawa, you know, twenty five thousand odd, uh, Bauchi eighty three thousand odd, Borono sixty two thousand, uh, Eboi sixty five thousand, uh, Gombe. I just told um, the uh, Dr. Gargua who left that um, the uh, figure cited by the Buhari Media Office, uh, no doubt getting it from a statistical organization, um, is uh, fifty two thousand. There's Jigawa forty two thousand, Kaduna thirty nine thousand, uh, Kano three hundred. 102,000, Katsina 26,000, uh, Kebi 25,000, and uh, Niger 75,000. Uh, Oyo State is not left out, 40,000, Rivers 22,000. Uh, what do I have here? Sokoto uh, 71,000, uh, Taraba 24,000, uh, Yobe 72,000, and Zamfara 19,000 out of school children. Uh, so you can see that um, it's, it's a big task, and uh, overall, the figure has dropped from 10.5 million to 6.9 million, all of that in the Muhammadu Buhari regime. So no doubt uh, we'll be building on that and bring down the number of, of these kids uh, and help usher them into the modern era where illiteracy is not really an option. Um, we're going to have to leave it there for today and the week on This Morning on TVC. That's our program. That's our program, but uh, did I just hear that there's a Mr. Mohammed on the line? Uh, yeah, let's see. If yeah. we can... Good morning, Mr. Yeah. Mohammed. Good morning, Uncle Ori. How are you? Very well, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, I, I want to appeal again with uh, Uncle Ori. Can, can you hear me? We, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, I want to appeal again, Uncle Ori. If you have an important case like this, you allow us to ask him questions, please. Okay. I happen to come from Gombe. And uh, I wanted to have asked him what is he doing about uh, making the children compulsory to go to school. Okay. Because I, I happen to be one of the kids that go to Islamia and go to uh, formal education too. We go to school in the morning and then we go to Islamia in the evening. What about that arrangement? Is this on ground? I wanted to ask him that. So I would have heard from him direct. But because if you, um, you didn't allow us to be asking him questions, I uh, don't know. You cannot answer that one now. I don't, I, I believe you can't answer this one. Because I wanted to ask him, what are they doing about those children that in the morning, you see other children are in the school, but some are going around with uh, small, small things on their head that are selling uh, 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 for, for business. Okay. I wanted to ask him that. What is the original put on ground on that? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mohammed. You know, I, I don't know whether you'll ask him and then he'll give us answer tomorrow. <laughs> We'll see what we can do. Tomorrow is a Saturday, and I was just going to say that yeah. until Monday. But thank you very much for your call. I did explain thank that you. there's a technical issue um, that didn't allow that. Otherwise, we would have liked nothing better than to you know, have you. Uh, sometimes it is possible, uh, but not in this particular case, uh, technically uh, speaking. Thank you very much, much Mr. Mohammed, for the call. And um, oh, sorry, tomorrow is um, Friday. So I've been told that I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. I'm sorry. I don't know why I was on a rush for the weekend. No, so scratch that. Tomorrow is Friday. It's Thursday today. So that's our program in any case. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, join us tomorrow, Friday, for a fresh edition.